we finally come to the section where we get to talk about graphing. Now, before we get there, though, we want to talk about how to find the distance in the, between a pair of points and finding the midpoint for the line segment that connects them. Now, this is how I go about finding the distance between two points. It's based off of the Pythagorean theorem, and this is how I do mine. Find the change in x squared. Find the change in y squared. Add them and take the square root. It's based off of the Pythagorean theorem. So if I squared both sides here, I'd have d squared equals change in x squared plus the change in y squared. So really, the d is acting as your hypotenuse in the Pythagorean theorem. Now, I, I do this instead of more, I guess, rigorous formula that you may see in the textbook because I think this is a lot easier. Your distance is the square root of what's the change in x from 9 to 1? What's the distance? What's the difference between those guys? And that's just 8. So this is 8 squared plus, and the distance between negative 4 and 11 is 15. Don't add these guys. Okay, you want to find how far apart negative 4 and 11 are. Okay. So it doesn't matter if you're looking at the textbook. It doesn't really matter what the sign is. If you go from negative 4 to 11 or 11 to negative 4, you're going to be squaring it anyway, so it's always going to be positive. So this guy gives me the square root of 64 plus 225. That's the square root of 289, and that is a perfect square, so the distance is equal to 17 units. Now, in terms of finding the midpoint, that's actually quite simple. The midpoint is the point that's halfway between these two. And the formula is very easy. It's the average of the x-coordinates and the average of the y-coordinates. So when I look at this, this is 9 plus 1 over 2, and this is negative 4 plus 11 over 2. So doing the math here, it gives me 10 over 2, which is just 5. Negative 4 plus 11 is 7 over 2, so we can just say this is 7 halves. If you want to say 3 and a half, you can. It's the same thing. So that's the midpoint, and this is the distance. So let's do that over here with number two. So number two, the distance is the change in x squared plus the change in y squared. And then we take the square root of the sum. So, the change in x from negative 7 to negative 15 is a change of 8, so that's 8 squared. Plus, from 4 to 12 is also a change of 8, so that's 8 squared. This is 64 plus 64, which is the square root of 128. Now, if you're paying attention here, you see that 128 comes from having two 64s. So if you were trying to simplify this, this is 2 times 64. So the distance is equal to 8 squares of 2 units. And then we're going to find the midpoint, just like we did before. So remember, the midpoint is the average of the x-coordinates and the average of the y-coordinates. So it's negative 7 and a negative 15 divided by 2 and then 4 plus 12 and that's divided by 2. So negative 7 minus 15 is negative 22 divided by 2 is negative 11 4 plus 12 is 16, over 2 is 8. So this would be the coordinates, or these would be the coordinates of the point that's halfway between negative 7, 4, and negative 15, positive 12. 
All right, so now we're going to move on to talking about circles. Now, the formula that we have for circles, what we're working with, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. And what we knew from this is that it gave you the center as being the coordinates h, k, and the radius is just r. So when you have a form that's given to you, like this x minus h and y minus k, when you try to pick the h and k off from the actual problem, you do the opposite. When you see the minuses here, that tells you you're going to do the opposite of what you see. So I see a negative 2, so my x coordinate is positive 2. I see a negative 3, so the opposite is a positive 3. Now, my r squared is 25. That doesn't mean your radius is 25. It means it's going to be the square root of that. So r squared is 25, which means r is 5. Now, to graph using this, you plot the center. But keep in mind, the center is not a point on the circle. So the center of 2, 3, I'm going to do an open circle right here. And with a radius of 5, the easy way to do this is to just go 5 units out in every direction. So we'll go 5 units out to the right, so that's going to be out there. Go 5 units up, 5 units to the left, and then 5 units down. And then you do your best to draw a circle, and hopefully nobody is watching you do this. I don't know why these guys have to be so difficult to draw. So it just kind of takes practice. It's probably not going to be perfect, but just try to make sure that it doesn't look like a, a diamond when you're done. It should be resembling round. So this is your center, and you've got the radius of 5. So from here to here is 5 units all the way around. So the circle is the graph that we have on the outside. The center is basically just a reference point. Uh, so looking at number four, in number four you're going to do the same kind of thing. The center, the opposite of what I see here, so that's going to be a positive one. The opposite of what I see here, so that's negative four. Now, r squared is 49 over four. So if I take the square root of both sides here, you find that r is seven halves. If it makes you feel better, you can say this is three and a half. That's probably going to help you whenever you, it comes to uh, plotting these points. So the center is at one, negative four, so down here. And then I'm going to go three and a half in every direction. So one, two, three and a half here. Three and a half here. One, two, three and a half here. And then down three and a half. All right, so you just connect the points. Do your best, again, to make a nice, smooth circle. And there you go. There's a circle with a center at 1, negative 4, with a radius of 3.5.